So we have actual things to talk about today. The video from 2024's South by Southwest. It is Jack Conti, CEO of Patreon. He kind of went through the idea that the follower is dead. It's actually going to start reversing back to the follower being the more prominent thing. Because I think that that is the way that things are going, you know? I mean, I think if you're just an artist, like slapping together bullshit to try to make money off your fans, like that's kind of well, the key. Gross. That's the key, though. That's the you know key, though. I mean? You shouldn't be doing that anyway. This episode of the Home Studio Hangout podcast is brought to you by Bliss. Bliss is a French audio developer focusing on developing creative and intuitive synths and effects. They've developed over 25 different plugins for Windows, Mac, and iOS for all of my iPhone and iPad producers. You can discover plugins such as the Bliss Monolith, which is a mono synth they have for free, as well as the Bliss Arpeggiator, Bliss Megalit Wavetable Synthesizer, or Bliss Voices, the ultimate vocal harmonizer. Go to bliss.com, that's B-L-E-A-S-S dot com, and use the promo code Home Studio Hangout, all one word, to save 20% off of your next order. Thank you to Bliss for sponsoring this episode of the Home Studio Hangout podcast. Now, let's get back to the conversation. Welcome back to the Home Studio Hangout podcast. I'm your host, Drew, here with my co-host, Josh. Josh, how are we doing today? I'm doing great. You sound sleepy. I'm so tired. Dude, me too. <laughs> I like didn't so sleep all weekend. Bro. I'm so tired, bro. Yeah, I think like I might take a nap after I'm, this. I'm laughing from how sad I am about how tired I am. Yeah, uh, it's, it's you're tired time. because you just you just drove back in from Nashville yesterday. Yeah. You went yeah. house hunting. Yes, sir. It was very sick. Found a place house. that's exciting. Yes, sir. I you got so lucky, dude. That's so lucky <laughs> to go uh, up in I three to... days and find a place. That's insane. Not even. It was only one full day. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. I guess that's yeah, true. Because we you drove up, up, we went and up late Friday night, late. and then we that's left right. midway through Sunday. Yeah, that's right. So. That's crazy. So, like, it's really like two days worth of actual time. Yeah. If yeah, we're just hoping the application goes through, but like so yeah. far, like it all seems good. So fingers crossed, you know. baby. Nashville, he's yeah. coming. He's gonna be your problem. <laughs> <laughs> Watch he's out gonna... for that one. He's a troublemaker. Uh, in other news, what I've been doing is playing a whole bunch of friggin' Pokemon because emulators are on iPhones, baby. Yeah, I saw that. I and can't do it. I won't do anything else. Yeah. Well, so I put it on my iPad. Smart. I only have my iPhone. See, I put it on my iPad, and then I spent like 20 bucks and bought this little <laughs> controller. Oh, that's cool. And so it's perfect for like retro games. And it pairs that's with my so instant. It instant pairs with my iPad. So all I do is just turn it on, and it instant pairs with my iPad. And then I, then we, then we roll. That's fire. So I've been playing a lot of Pokemon Leaf Green, a lot of Super Nintendo stuff. I can't wait for GTA 6. (laughs) Dude, you know what's crazy? We got (laughs) emulators on iOS before we got GTA 6. That's insane. (laughs) To be fair, emulators have been around for a while, but they got banned. Because we used to do that in high school. Well, you had to sideload them. So this is like the first time that Apple has like properly approved them to exist in the app store Mm -hmm. um and it thank you european union that's the only reason that we have it but all those laws that they've passed recently about like the app store stuff and the reason we have USB-C on iphone and all that kind of stuff um that's all thanks to the eu they're also going to be the reason why apple um starts using rcs yep yeah, basically yeah. all of the positive changes that people have been asking for for Apple to make, uh, European Union is basically like forcing them to make, which is super cool. That's it's right, also baby. making it's also making like coexisting with non iPhone people a lot easier. That's right. Hey, um, so wow, uh, we're just catching up here. So I'm yeah. in the market for a new computer. Yeah, um, which is great timing, you know, with me moving. Yeah, but so I've been searching for the the deals right dude micro center 
What's that? Somebody, somebody. Okay. Oh yeah. So I didn't know what this was either. Either until I moved to Atlanta. Micro Center is kind of like Best Buy. It's literally just Best Buy, but like you oh, can walk I, into a Micro that, Center and like. Is it off the highway? I think I've seen it before. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay, right yeah, by yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. like that revolving sushi place and stuff. Yes. I think. Yes. I know what you're talking but, about. Um, I've literally never been in there, but I see it every time I go down there. It's like on the top of Shambly. Um, yeah. Right off of 285. But mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it, it's basically like Best Buy, but like you can walk in and just like it's like only for computers, right? So like you can like oh, walk cool. in and they have like refurbished phones, refurbished computers. You could build your own computer just off the shelves there, like that's kind of like sick. how Best Buy used to be, you know? Yeah, yeah. And like they have really the good day. prices on stuff, and so they're super tight. There's only like 15 of them in the country, which makes me sad. Mm -hmm. But um, they, somebody said, hey, if you have a micro center near you, you should check and see because they will get refurbished MacBooks from Apple and sell them for like dirt cheap. Yeah. And so like, I know a dude especially who got if like they're an like, M2. Especially if they're like officially refurbished, like check, refurbished check Mac, like from Apple refurb. Yeah, that's kind of what like he implied. They're basically brand it, new. <laughs> Yeah, and so like this laptop's a refurb. I love it, but um, yeah. well, I hate it, but I loved it. Um, they're selling new computers for like massive discounts, dude. That's sick. If yeah. anybody's in the and, Atlanta area or has a micro center around you, go check it out. Yeah, let us I mean, know, for cause... for those that are in other places, let me let me add one to my cart here. Cause it's like two to like six hundred dollars off of new MacBooks. That's which crazy. Is crazy. How much would the one that I want be? So, are you looking at like a? You're looking at like a laptop, I assume. I'm looking at either a Mac Studio or an M3 Pro, 14 inch MacBook Pro. You could probably do the, the M2 Pro and get the bigger screen because the the spec bumps not that much of a difference. To be I honest. can't really find them right now. Well, actually, the bump between M2 and M3 is actually pretty hefty. So the M3 Pro performs almost as well as an M2 Max. Yes. Which but is the M2, crazy. I, th I think if you go down a chip, but you go up a level and get the bigger screen, it's like basically the same price. Yeah. The only people that, that have them are... Yeah, I, I, I was checking yeah. into it, and the only ones are like more expensive at BH. Oh, okay. That's dumb. But um yeah, so there's Denver, there's Tustin, California, Duluth, Marietta, Chicago, a couple other places in Illinois, Kansas, Massachusetts, Maryland, Michigan, Minnesota, Montana. What's MO? Missouri. Missouri. Um New Jersey, New York, Ohio. So it's Some very like a Midwest and Northeast thing. Yeah, it's weird. I, I never heard of it. And, and, uh, and he was like, you never heard of Micro Center? We got to go to Micro Center. <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> we'll go to Micro Center, dude. That's go crazy. So we have actual things to talk about today. And I'm actually very excited. I, I said this to Josh like, what, two weeks ago, a week ago, or something like that? Yes, sir. Um, initially. And it's a video. I'm not going to pull it up, but it'll be in the description if you want to check out the actual video. Uh, but it's a video from 2024's South by Southwest. It is Jack Conti, CEO of Patreon. Uh, but previously, before he was the CEO of Patreon, he was like a full time gigging musician, and he still is a producer. And he uh has a band with his wife, and they do like jazzy pop music. It's super cool. I don't know. Have you ever? Did you ever listen to Pomplamoose, Josh? Mm -mm. They're really no. sick. They're really sick. Uh, but he also has a band, uh, a cover band called Scary Pockets. They're really big on YouTube as well. Uh, they do a lot of like one take. I think that's their whole thing is they like get together and do one takes of like pop songs, but they do them in like they'll do them in like big band form or lounge yeah. jazz form or something like that. And it's it's honestly pretty sick. But, at, you know, doing all that, he he built Patreon and he had a really interesting uh, take, which is how 
he kind of went through the the idea that the follower is dead, which I, I Josh, I, I think you would probably agree with that, right? Yes, sir. Um, and the, but what did you think of his? What did you think of his uh, thought that it's actually going to start reversing back to the follower being the more prominent thing there at the end? So like his um, to, to to maybe explain it to the listener before you give your answer. He had the thing, he had the thought that, you know, it used to be like broad audience and then it funneled down to a fan. But then more recently, because of the death of the follower and then kind of the death of the true fan, it's gone backwards into being all about like social. So like Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, like the really broad audience stuff. And we've kind of lost the deeper, like true fan aspect of it. So that was his thing yeah that was basically his whole spiel the thing that i found most interesting about it was how he was talking about how right now it seems like i i don't know all of the services that he posted but one of them was discord mm -hmm. um and i just thought that that was super interesting because yeah i know so many people who are more into discord than any social media platform i'm one of those people and it seems like more and more people are hopping on board because you're able to actually engage with a community of like-minded people and have yeah. conversations and make each other laugh and talk about cool things versus, you know, just like the doom scrolling, you know? Yeah. And yeah. So I found that I, extremely interesting and also extremely encouraging. Yeah. 100%. That, that is the way that things are going. So I, I can give you the, uh, I can tell you what all of these are because I do know what most of these are. So uh, okay. in the video, he talks about like all of this stuff and the, the, the moment Josh is talking about is uh, at minute 2639, which is a, he's shows a bunch of products or like, you know, uh, softwares that are currently doing really cool things, which is discord fourth wall gum road, uh, Kajabi and a company called moment house which has now been acquired by patreon and it's just called moment now so discord obviously most people know what discord is we have a discord like it's a cool community like building thing and it's a really cool way for people to interact in like kind of niche more niche communities and you can have a bunch of niche communities inside of your discord right um the ones that I thought were really cool, like that I have also heard of. So Kajabi is more about a lot of people that build uh, courses or like paid membership sites and things like that. They use Kajabi to build paid communities around a course. So like if Gross. you had, so if you had a course on, uh, so if you had a course on how to be a music producer, <laughs> Well, let's, I, I, I'm thinking even more broad than that because a lot of the people that I know that use Kajabi use it for like business stuff, right? So it's like, yeah, I wonder uh, if Maddie has used that for any of her. She like, may has she she courses has made yeah a lot of designers use it for design courses and stuff, uh, and yeah. then they'll and then the community when you while you're paying for it the community is kind of also held so you have you know comments and like chats groups and like different like almost slack-esque vibe to it along with the course products so it's it is honestly very cool uh and then uh gumroad is actually very sick i'm probably going to use gumroad for myself but it is a way isn't that is it is a printing stuff so it's a way to sell stuff in general so it can be for printing uh, -oh. uh but you can actually do uh like anything on there so here i'll i'll shoot you oh. the website if you yeah, want there's books yeah it's literally anything oh 3d design software development dude it's That's very crazy. i always thought that it was just for like putting designs on things so you can do that that's like one of the things you can do so what i've seen people use for mm -hmm. is this is how people sell uh sample packs like start like producers that don't want to have their own website sell sample packs via gumroad or they'll sell like preset packs and things like that 
It's very sick. I think that this is how people sell a lot of Ableton M4L devices, isn't yes, it? Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Yes. Yeah. And okay. they t- they yeah. only take That's like where I know it from then. They only take like 10% or something like that. It's crazy. Okay, yeah, it's a flat 10% and there is no fee. That's sick. So like it's just a flat 10%. If you sell on it, it's 10% and that's it, which is like honestly insanely accessible. That's great. It's so much different than Shopify. It, yeah, it's it's actually the death of Shopify, basically. <laughs> I think so. I think it's what everybody. It. Shopify no, is very it's too sick. big. No, it, it's also but, too big. And Shopify does a very different thing, in my opinion. They're also Shopify like is for scaling best. a business like really, really big. Gumroad is really great for people that are on smaller scales that are trying to build very niche communities. You know, like what we like what we do. You know, home studio people are yeah. a very niche community. So Gumroad would be more Join our Gumroad, us. dude. But Gumroad is where, so, like, so if we if we built like a home studio hangout, like sample pack or preset pack of all of our top stuff, and we get sell sell for like a dollar or something like that, just to uh, be able to pay our editors and stuff, like we would probably use Gumroad for that because it's easy. Uh, fourth wall yeah. is uh, kind of similar to Gumroad, except it's more of i would i would say it's a little more akin to um shopify tmg uses fourth wall if that tells you anything so it's like merch stuff mkbhd uses fourth wall for all of uh their branding stuff um but yeah it's essentially like Hmm. shopify redbubble spread shop those kind of places ko-fi uh and then the last one was moment house which is actually one of the i think he he talked about it a little bit did you get to that part he talked about it a little bit but it's doing Mm -hmm. uh it's doing like paywall or uh live events oh this is what all the yeah this is what all the comedians use Yes. So a lot of com- like uh I think Andrew, what's his name? Use it. Schultz. Andrew Schultz. This is what he released his thing on initially was Moment House. And now it's just called Moment. Uh it's very cool. I think it is very cool thing. And it's a very interesting way to like have a super high production live event and then put it out somewhere, you know? Or like, I think yeah. we were talking with Evan, you know, about like releasing documentaries and like people releasing short films and stuff like that. This is a yeah. way to have like a ticketed small event for people that are doing those level of like short films or, you know, smaller documentaries for a very niche community. It's it's pretty sick, dude. I think and like he's he he's very much on it. I agree like what you said, I definitely agree with him that like it's coming back to the idea of like, there will always be the people that, that can think at the top level and can just be like, I don't care what we do, you know, uh, we're just going to do and every, we're just going to do whatever and everything's going to, and everybody's going to like it. But I think it's really cool that like all of these companies are making things more accessible to Mm -hmm. like the smaller indie people and i i think this is going to be i mean so just imagine like how this is going to change what the music industry looks like right yeah so you know you could have a discord or uh like i'm even thinking like a small independent artist could use most of these to do something right you could yeah. have a Discord based around like your band and like fans of your band can join the Discord. That's really cool. You could build like a making of the record or something. And that's really for your fans, right? The a really long documentary making of a record. And then you know, you give people like, "Hey, it'll be $5 tickets on moment to to watch this premiere of this thing, you know?" Yeah. Like that's real and that's really cool. Uh, you can use Gumroad 
or fourth wall to sell your merch and have a lower percentage that makes merch way more accessible online to sell online. And you can sell digital products mm -hmm. and physical products and you can sell like, you know, people aren't really buying CDs anymore, but you know, you could get vinyl and sell it there and not have to worry about all of these crazy, you know, shipping costs as much. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's very sick. I, um, yeah, I don't know. It's just cool that like these open source feeling community driven platforms are available, you know? Yeah. Cause, so, uh, I don't know. Lord knows we need it. Yeah, for sure. Well, and it was really funny because like I sent that to you. And then I think a couple of days ago, I was listening to a podcast. Uh, I'll send it to you if you want to check it out, Josh. But it's uh, a dude named Jay Klaus was on a podcast, uh, Deep Dive with Ali Abdal. Jay Klaus runs a, a YouTube channel called Creator Science. And it's just about like people building communities essentially mm -hmm. and dude is really smart and he helped he has helped to build a bunch of communities that are already pretty big in like the branding space so uh smart passive income which is a podcast slash community uh with this dude named pat flynn who's like big in the in the business space uh he helped build his community but they were talking about how, uh, so you'll, you'll remember this because you hate these kind of people. You remember how like everybody had a course yeah. like five years ago, maybe even three years ago, like, and even still kind of now people are trying to do that. But like, that was like the meta for like how to get money fast for a while. Yeah. <laughs> I know you hate them <laughs> significantly. <laughs> <laughs> um it's fine it's either there i think they're good and but some of them weren't uh, but, but i think that's the no. problem i think that's the problem right <laughs> some were really good yeah. some were great at, in fact but then they got flooded with really bad versions of it because people were like oh i can do this and get an easy stack of money and take advantage of people right yeah and they're like oh i'm bad sure i'll show you how to do this thing badly yeah yeah uh so jay gross says that communities are probably going to be that next meta mm. that creating like, communities like, based around a thing for paid wall communities is going to be the next like meta yeah and do, do you kind of already see that happening yeah well i mean they have features built in for stuff like that you know and I see it, you know, it's like, oh, if you subscribe to our Patreon, you get access to our Discord. Yeah. Like, I'm in a paid community right now, and I don't even know how to cancel it. I've just been paying $7 a month for like two <laughs> years, and I, I have no clue how to cancel it. I'm never in there. It's like all these metal and rock guys, like, I don't care. But like, for some reason, I'm still in it. I, I don't know how to cancel. Yeah. Hey, man. But uh -huh. yeah, I don't know. But I, <laughs> I, I don't pay for anything like that. Uh, I know it exists. I uh, I understand the idea of it, and I know it works mm -hmm. for people. Uh, I I don't I think Discord just can do easily devolve into like cesspools of shouting. Hey, you think? <laughs> like the Kenny Beats one is a really good example of that. How how like it sucks early on though? Oh it was God. awesome. Early on, it yeah, was great. Yeah, I didn't great. have the privilege. No, I think when I joined, it had like 100K members. Bro, you go into like Gear Talk on there, and it's just a bunch of dudes talking about some garbage. It's like <laughs> one guy will be like, oh, yeah, my favorite vocal chain is an NT1A. And it's just like, yeah, it's just so many people like being heavily opinionated about things that they have no experience in. 100%. And it's well, like, and I feel like that's a very ridiculous. good example of like the Ian Kirkpatrick discord is okay. I don't not know that too far off. Really? I don't know it's, that one. It's not, it's not nearly as active as like the ones that we're familiar with. Yeah. But like, it's, it's very much like you show up and it's just like, Hey, <laughs> meme city. It's like, what's the point of this? You well, know? yeah. And like, I can understand like having a meme section, right. Of it. 
Uh, but yeah, I, I follow. I'm in a Discord for One Pace, which I don't know if you know what One Pace is, but like One Pace is uh the One Piece anime, but they cut oh, out, yeah. but they cut out all of the filler and shorten all of the sections to save time. So it like that's fire speeds up the entire anime. Um, and it's pretty sick. So I'm in a discord for that. And like, they'll, they'll talk one piece and theories and stuff on top of like, you know, having the actual episode links drop in there. So, I mean, it's pretty, and it's pretty sick. I enjoy it. I, I don't know. It's just like, I can definitely see how some people, some people's could devolve into like a Kenny beats example of everything just yeah. to be fair like Ian's isn't that bad um I'm just double checking before I, I feel like the Matt the, Rad one is uh, an example of one going well the only one that's doing well and it's because of how strict they are yeah like for instance I just watched a guy get banned this morning because he was just like man you guys have an awful lot of time to talk it's oh, like God. That's the whole point of the Discord. And immediately, one dude was like at moderator, and then immediately that guy was gone. Oh god! <laughs> like, no warning, just banned. Dag They just yeah, don't. They like, just don't. There's no. They don't allow self promotion. Like if you're selling something and you try to like plug it, they'll just like delete it and be like, "Sorry, bro, we don't do that here. We yeah, have enough yeah. shit." You know. No, and that's like, dope. It's very sick. And if you're also one of those people who are like, "Yeah, dude, the best vocal chain is the NT one A," then like. Someone's going to be like, yeah, well, first of all, you're wrong. And second of all, like your shit sounds bad. So like maybe you should not. They'll use call it. you out on it for sure. Yeah. <laughs> and then if you're like, no, it sounds good. They're going to be like, all right, dude, maybe your ears are broken anyway. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Moving on. Yeah. Yeah. You know? uh, yeah. It's like, I don't know. It's but, I, but then I, we it, also have a lot of fun in there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and there's like a lot of good conversations. You've met a lot of good people through that discord. You've... I think the food channel in there <laughs> is more active than any other channel. Yeah. You know, I've been following the lore, dude. The, there's this one guy. I, I forget where he lives, but him and his girlfriend went out and they picked a bunch of these, this one species of wild mushrooms. Yeah. And they dried them out. And he was like, we love dried up mushrooms. You know, I'll just rehydrate them and use them for whatever. And like, he just made his first risotto with them. And I was oh, like, nice. that's sick, Let's dude. Go, My man dude. is foraging. Yeah, dude. You know? <laughs> That's uh, awesome. I mean, that Discord is the reason why I know how to make a decent shot of espresso. You yeah. Know? Um, you know, the bagel For recipe sure. in there is a safeguarded secret. If you want to make good New York City style bagels, you have to join the Matt Rad Discord. <laughs> um, <laughs> Let's go. But it's but, sick. You know, it's yeah. It's like, yeah. I mean, I definitely see where it's going. And it's really nice that that Discord, like from day one, they're like, we're never going to charge people and we're never going to yeah. well, deviate from and, this. And plan. that's, I really want ours to like kind of exist in that same space. It's like, we haven't pushed ours very hard. And I ha intentionally haven't tried because I, it's we have, conver we have conversations in there. And like, I'm actually really proud of how active the people, the little amount of people are in our Discord, to be honest. Like, yeah. We have a solid amount of people. People aren't afraid to ask questions. We're afraid we're, we'll give answers. I post the episodes in there to make sure, you know, if anybody has any questions or people don't miss it. It's actually really nice for people not to miss stuff. I've noticed that too. I can understand why podcasts would want to have discords because mm -hmm. the way that socials are, like if you watch on YouTube and you don't listen and you don't get stuff pushed to your subscriber feed on like you know, a podcast or something, it could be very easy to miss it if you're depending on an algorithm to send it to you. So, yeah. like, it's a lot easier for people to just go, oh, I always know the new episode on this day is going to be in this place. So, like, we've had some good conversations about some synths in there. We've had some good conversations about different stuff. So, we got, like, uh, shout out Dave Rossica from uh, the management company who I interviewed like not too long ago. He hopped in and was checking, you know, checking people out people's stuff, and that was really cool. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think it's 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 one of those things where I want it to be very low key, and I want it to be kind of like what you're talking about for the Matt Rad Discord. Like I want it to be very like we're here to have a good time and talk. And people who aren't here to have a good time can go 
and people are here to promote self promote. Like we have a self promotion channel and that's there. So it doesn't clutter up the other feeds. Like I want people to self promote, but like, I'm not trying to have people sell stuff. Well, it's also one of those things where like a community is only as valuable as the people who like have the knowledge to make it valuable. Yeah. You know, like our discord will never be a massive resource the way that like the Matt Rad discord is. No, because that's just um, not ours. Ours isn't for that. Ours is yeah, for just like, you know, we just all aren't. of all of these. Ours is for all of these people that are like getting started together or at kind of similar spaces together to kind of like come up together. Whereas the Matt Rad discord yeah. is for people to learn from each other in an, a much higher level way. Well, like you're in, um, you're in the basement, right? Yeah, the I'm in the basement. That I made. Yeah, yeah. Very. Like, that there's... one's very similar to the home studio hangout Discord, actually. But it's just very at... inactive. But the until minute that somebody posts something, it's very and everybody active. Everybody chimes in. Yep. Yeah, and it's pretty sick. One hundred percent. Seth's name on there is absolutely hilarious. That's what. It um. Is. <laughs> <laughs> but um, someone actually just joined it. I have no clue who Alex Para is. But um, oh, Alex Para is a I think he's a producer. I'm friends with him on Facebook. OK, yeah. But yeah, so I don't know. Like it's it's sick that we have that. And like if I'm looking for a certain sample or, yeah, you know, whatever fabled I are, like I know I can post in there because I have all of my friends in there who know a ton and have been yeah. around for a long time. Instead and of like, having to text everybody it's individually. It's like super sick. Yeah, exactly. Or like throw them into an iMessage group chat. Which like, nobody sucks. wants to do you that, know? yeah. No. And so like it's really cool, you know. Um, it's also sick because Discord integrates with everything now. So like I'll be in voice chat talking to producers mm-hmm. about music stuff while I'm getting my ass beat in Battlefield. Yeah, you know? for sure. And like, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just sick. I, re- I really think that Discord is super valuable and it's definitely uh, the future. Sure. You know? And I, I think like kajabi is that but for more businessy people essentially that's basically yeah. what kajabi is so if you're like more in the yeah. business sector like SaaS, like software development company sector like kajabi is more your thing than discord is your thing if that makes sense what's wild is it seems like discord is just as capable as slack and like slack is like the business it's the business discord yeah basically you know? but for and... but for individual companies yeah and and it's really interesting well, because the way that you look at it, right, like an individual company is simply a team of people. And so yeah. it's very much similar to like a team of people who decide to join a Discord. Yep. Um, it's very similar. So it's, it's just kind of funny because like it's and it's all just because of a bunch of nerds. We're yeah. Like, oh, we want to play video games together. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We don't want to go outside. <laughs> well, somebody, we, somebody. I don't want to go outside. <laughs> somebody was using Slack and you're like, but what if I had this for my homies? <laughs> No, I'm pretty sure Discord that Discord Slack is not after. I know it did, but I'm just saying, like Discord it's is crazy. Just, Discord is just Slack for the homies, <laughs> basically. Basically, yeah. I remember like uh, the job that I worked there. Like, do you know what Slack is? I was like, it's business Discord. Yeah. And my manager is like hardcore nerd. She was like, yeah, you got yeah, it <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah, it's so I thought that I thought that uh video was really cool. I also was interested in like the couple of things that they're adding to Patreon that was pretty interesting. Um they're they're basically taking a lot of things from other places and because Patreon is such a big paywall, it is the number one paywall place. Like place for mm-hmm. s- essentially what I would call super subscribing uh where you, you know, pay for people to extra content um there they are adding things like chats inside their inside their patreon which i thought was pretty cool so kind of like a discord-esque feature especially for you got to think for like non-nerds for more normie people who use patreon like they don't want to have to learn discord and do all that stuff i thought it was pretty cool that they're adding that for their um For those people, there's a podcast that I listened to called The Minimalists. I don't know if you've ever heard of them before. Uh, They had a documentary on Netflix and they're they're pretty popular, wrote some books and stuff. Uh, And they use Patreon heavily. That's like their own. That's their main source of income outside of the books. And. But like a lot of those kind of people don't use Discord, you know, so 
they would use a chat feature in built into Patreon a lot more. It actually makes a ton of sense for that that community to do that, um, which I thought was pretty interesting. And then the uh, they're adding a shop feature, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, and then the free membership, which I thought was also really sick. That just opens up the availability to people. Like, I think the free membership is just like you give them an email and that's kind of it. Yeah. So you could have an email tier, basically like a zero dollar tier. Uh, so you could say it's discord for the zero dollar tier now instead of the one dollar tier. And then have like actual. I would say better like things that would be more worth a dollar for a dollar rather than just discord access i struggle i struggle i struggle with one dollar discord access for people oh yeah so you know how tmg has a subscription yeah i'm subscribed Um, yeah but they have their own platform yeah so like all the long drives it comes in handy i was like you know what they give you discord access with this i should probably join i joined and immediately they were like "Uh uh-oh Josh writes songs. What kind of songs do you write, dude? I was like, oh, no. And then they were just like kind of messing with me. Yeah. And then they like had a bunch of weird inside jokes. And like I literally lasted like 20 minutes. I was like, all right, I'm going to head out. And they were like, all right, see you. And I just left. <laughs> all right, I'm going to head out. <laughs> it was just me. weird. Spun I was like, me. yeah, these. Yeah, it, it was bad. I did not like it at all. That's like the one downside of Discord is that like there's like this um culture of discord yeah where like it's very like anonymous you know Mm -hmm. and it's very like valorant like i don't leave the house you know and so uh, you get a lot of weird people perpetual or uh, chronically online people yeah a bunch of chronically online people that just suck dude (laughs) but you know but i thought it was if people start joining our discord i'm gonna make that a mandatory (laughs) like you have to be able like you have to post your name uh i don't care if it is on discord but like in our discord your nickname has to be your full name (laughs) specifically who you are you freaking weirdos yeah um i but i just thought it was really interesting that like a week after i sent you that video that i had another two other people on totally separate like industries also talking about the community thing and that how they also think that's going to be the future of the industry the same as jack conti who's on a totally separate side of things also talking about how community is going to be the future of the industry of the creator industry. it 100 percent is it absolutely is and honestly i feel like it's almost silly for us to talk about it with music because like sure it's going to help out music quite a lot but i think that as far as it goes like it's going to help out so many other industries exponentially more than music oh 100 like, that completely changes the game for film dude. education you know what i mean yeah film and education are going to benefit so much more from this than anything yeah um especially with things like moment existing you know it's literally a premiere platform it's like hey do you want to make a movie do you want to make money from that movie here's an easy way to do it you think film you think film and i think i agree i said education and i agree with the education side and the film side uh and maybe like the i think the creator business right so if we're looking at like uh people who may like youtubers let's say like youtube people right yeah i feel like that's gonna it's gonna help them a lot probably i don't see why i don't see why it couldn't help music people well here's why all right the primary way that you consume music is through streaming it's not changing streaming the primary way that you consume movies is through either purchasing them on a platform or going to the movies. So like moment is changing that, you know, education. The primary way that you do that is by going to a school, taking online courses. So that other platform, it's helping change the job. Yeah. You know what I mean? Discord is changing social media because like you go on your phone, open up an app, you talk to people. That's what discord is, you know? So it's like, like 
with music, it's not changing the primary source of income for artists. It's I would another argue stream that, of I, revenue. I would know? argue that streaming isn't even the primary source of revenue for, for artists. Well, if you're a record label, that's the primary way that you're recouping. Yeah, but we're not but artist. we're not talking about record labels, right? Because this we're not talking about tops. We're talking about indies, right? So if we're talking about indies, the main their main source of income is going to be what? Probably touring. Touring, streaming, merch. So this now gives you a more creative way to not have to tour quite as much or make touring cooler when you do tour okay it, okay. it basically it doesn't it doesn't enhance the streaming part the music part it does enhance everything else around the music part i think it, so community building it enhances if you want to do music video stuff it enhances if you want to do any kind of merch or direct to consumer stuff well, but now you're also talking about extra expenses, though. You know what I mean? So, like, you have to hit X amount of sales before you even break even on the production costs. Versus, like, if you're, you know, a filmmaker or whatever, like, you already have the money from investors and you were going sure. to release it through one platform or another. So, making more money will never hurt you. You know what I mean? Sure. But it's like, how much does a documentary take about an album process? Like, probably at least like $20,000. You know what I mean? Not if you shoot it, not if you shoot it on a $600, you know, camera. It costs $600 pay, in editing time. But to pay somebody to follow I think you, you around are, with the camera for weeks. I think weeks? you are, I think I think you are thinking way to grand scale. I and you're also not thinking of a normie who loves an artist yeah but like if regardless you're right, like, of who that artist but, is but like okay but like if you're an independent imagine artist, mac like, imagine mac imagine mac first album mac before he was anybody right if he walked around with a phone camera potato talking about stuff you'd pay to see that maybe you Maybe. would one hundred percent. If they said, "Oh, this, this, this behind the scenes of him making this record is only going to come out on this platform," and they're going to edit together, and it's probably going to look a little bit shitty, and that's okay because you get to see the creation process and the behind the scenes and what he's thinking and how he's writing and that whole process. I mean, sure, maybe, but it also depends. I mean, it, there's a lot of variables at play. I mean, I think if you're sure. just an artist, like slapping together bullshit to try to make money off your fans, like that's kind well, of well, that's the key. Gross. That's the key, though. That's the you know key, though. I mean? You shouldn't be doing that anyway. You shouldn't be yeah. doing that anyway. So it's this like, is I don't know. this is to the enhance cost. the experience. Yeah, but then it's it's like I don't know. It's it's gonna help out artists who are already like who already have like a strong following, you know. But like, I just yeah. don't. But think and that you, like, you don't, you don't take away the top. You don't take away YouTube and TikTok. You still have to do all that stuff, right? All that stuff. None of that stuff goes away, in my opinion. And I, I think even he said that in his in his uh, keynote, he says that still goes, that still stays. All that you know, top of funnel like broad stuff stays because that's how you get everything out there to a new audience. What we're talking about is existing audience when you. When you build when you build an audience, how do you go deeper with them? Right now, you don't have a ton of options to do that until recently. And the hallmark strategy of the drivers of these businesses is the focus on deeper connections as opposed to just more connections. The true fan, the real fan, call it whatever you want. It's the 5% of fans that drive 90% of the community in business. This is a direct to fan business. This is an ads business. This is about depth of connection. This is about maximizing attention. This is about deeper fans. This is about more fans. And what binds this new wave of emerging companies is that their strategic focus is down here. The next decade of creative and media technology companies will focus on building direct to fan connections and community strength. As creators, we'll still need the social platforms. We'll still need those companies up here for discovery, for reach. We need that. But those companies will be one component of the many tools that we have as creative people 
to help us run our communities and businesses. Yeah, I mean, I could see that. I just think that it's not like, it's not one of those things that's going to like, you know, either make you famous or like help you retire. You know what I mean? If you're an artist, yeah. but it'll definitely. No, I think it's going to, I think it's going to help you make a living. Yeah. I, I think it's going to be able to help out, you know, I don't think yep. it's like this game changing thing. Cause at the end of the day, like it's still all about touring. It's still all about album sales. I think it's, I think I would argue, I think it is a way that it is, this is a way for people not to have to tour as much. And you would be able to build a solid fan base and then go from maybe $20,000 a year to maybe $35,000 a year. That's kind of what I'm thinking. Yeah, it's I like mean, it, I don't know. I, I guess we just view these things very differently. I think if like you're trying to be an artist, like I think it's pointless to, you know, just like kind of tiptoe around it, you know, be like, oh, you know, I'll just I'm not saying I'm not, no, like, I'm not saying tiptoe um, around it. I'm saying the reality is most people don't make a lot of money as an artist. The reality yeah. is there is a middle class of artists right now. Yeah, which is weird because it's all thanks to Spotify. And I know and it's Spotify a good and bad thing sucks. It's weird. It's a good. And, that's what I'm saying. It's a good and bad thing. So why not give the middle class of artists people who are probably not going to make more than, you know, four grand a month off of streaming, right? A way to double down on those pre-existing fans while they're still growing, but double down on those pre-existing fans to give more to those fans. Yeah. Yeah, which is very sick, you know. But yeah, and then yeah, by I mean, that, like by I that said, I mean, logic, I don't bro. think it's unimportant. I just think it's uh, yeah. I just don't think it's the most important thing for artists, you know. I think it's going to be the way that people think about. I think that this is going to be a part of the new music industry. I think yeah, this is sure. going. I think once this becomes more of like a big thing in the tech world. You're kind of starting to see it a little bit more with like podcasts and you're going to start seeing it more in other communities. And I think once you do that, you're going to start seeing labels go, well, you got to start building a community the same way TikTok happened, right? When people started blowing up on TikTok, I think labels are going to be like, all right, you got to have some discord or something now. And every artist is going to have like a discord around their music in the next yeah handful of years yeah it's very interesting i don't know it's cool watching things change in such a short period of time you know like i think we remember whenever think, spotify became a thing and we were like what's you yeah. mean you could just listen to it yeah you could just, well i think you could just... i think that's i think that's why i wanted to have this conversation because this feels like a moment to me where like mm -hmm. i think we're, we're probably going to remember this conversation and then like in five years we're going to look back on it and be like we called this like, look at this. Look what's happening. And it may not necessarily yeah. look like what we are t talking about exactly right now, but I think it'll be this adjacent. Yeah, I just can't wait until Mark Zuckerberg buys Discord and runs it into the ground. Um, yeah. We all know it won't be Doesn't Elon, somebody already own he... Discord? Is oh, no, they're a privately private. held company, and the co-founders Jason Citron and Stanislav Vishnevsky are likely to be majority owners. Other investors, including Tencent, Sony, Dragoneer, Investment Group, Index Ventures, Excel, Fidelity yeah, that's, Investments, that's a... and Franklin Templeton also hold stakes yeah. in the company. That's fire, dude. Yeah. I can't believe that I'm using something that so isn't 95% owned by Vanguard and BlackRock. <laughs> so, I know. I know, dude. Wow. I mean, yeah, they, I mean they, have private, they, they have private equity, but to be a company as big as they are of course they have private equity you know yes sir i i don't blame funny, them dude <laughs> everyone's like man vanguard's the devil and it's like yeah but also i'm setting up all my accounts through them <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> they're never going under dude <laughs> yeah dude they're never going under we need retirement baby that's right baby this is well, the year dude yeah this Financial is the year literacy yeah dude. savings shout out spencer <laughs> Yes, sir. All right. Uh, I think that's a good conversation. Hey, if you want to hop in the Discord, hop in the Discord. Yeah. We'll uh, how do we we'll do chat that? and we'll talk stuff. 
Um, Don't they need an invite? We have links. We have links. I have a permanent invite set up in the link in the description. Yeah, sick. I have a a permanent invite set up in the link in the description. So if you want to hop in the Discord and just chat, feel free. It's active some days and inactive other days. So it is what it is. We try to keep it pretty low key. I promise you, we won't spam you. (laughs) That's one thing I can promise. I can uh, well, I can kidding. promise that we will not spam the Discord like crazy. So getting me to reply to anything is really difficult, and I apologize. That advance. is very true. Yeah, I know, so. as the podcast co-host. That's right. <laughs> That's right, baby. You reply to me most of the time. Sometimes, but all right. Well, well, it's been real. Thanks dude. for listening. Yeah, it's been real. It's been real fun. Bye. See you guys later. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Home Studio Hangout podcast. If you could take the time to like, subscribe. If you're listening to this on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or any other audio platform, go ahead and make sure you're subscribed and also leave a rating and a review. It helps the show get out to new people. And we're trying to grow every single week. Once again, thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Home Studio Hangout podcast, and we'll see you next week.